Today I'm going to take this logic board from an iPhone 5C and put it inside of this phone. This is a good solution if you have a phone that is otherwise in decent condition but has some sort of problem with the internals. So pretty much you're going to have the storage, everything that's stored on your phone, RAM, SIM card reader. Uh, you can see we have the main camera attached here still. If that's working, we'll go ahead and keep that. This will not affect the memory that is stored here. It will replace whatever is over here with what's on this board. So yes, everything from this phone will be gone. Whatever amount of storage and whatever you've got stored on the phone here is going to be on the new, uh, inside the new housing here. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit. So we're gonna start with the two bottom screws that are right next to the charging port, the lightning port. Go ahead and take those out. You'll need a pentalobe driver to do that and you can find all of the tools used in this video if you check the video description. And I'm going to use a suction cup. You don't necessarily need one of these but they do work out most of the time as long as the screen isn't cracked. You should be able to pull this away just slightly from the frame, make sure it doesn't go too far because we've got some cables inside the phone up here at the top that we don't want to damage. So once you get it cracked open, you want to very carefully continue to open it and you may need to slide the display over this direction to disengage the clips at the top. Once you do that, you can open this up and then make sure that you have something that you can prop this display on. You don't want it to fall all the way over. That can place unnecessary stress on these cables, which are very sensitive. So I'm gonna find something heavy enough to support this. Go ahead and set this over here, and then we will open this up. And first thing we're going to do is disconnect the power. So we have a couple screws here that need to come out of this panel so that we can access the battery terminal. Go ahead and take those out and make sure that you're keeping all of your screws in order because they are unique and most of them are not interchangeable. After you get the screws out, you can remove this panel and then we'll want to disconnect the battery cable. So if you have a small pry tool, carefully go under the edge of this cable you don't want to dig in too far there. It's very easy to damage the components underneath. Of course, if you're taking this board out and you won't be using it, you won't have to worry too much about it, but you do want to be careful all the same. So after you've got the power disconnected, we have four screws up here at the top. These are all Phillips. I'm using a PH000 size driver to remove them. I'm going to start with this screw up here in the corner. And the reason for that is normally this screw will not stick to your screwdriver. It is a special type of alloy that for the most part will not stick to anything magnetized and that's so that it doesn't affect the compass up at this end of the phone. So you may need to get some tweezers or something similar to kind of assist this one in taking it out. You also notice that it's quite long compared to the other three. So again, make sure that you keep these in order. You do not want to mix them up. That can lead to problems with some phones, not as much on this one as others, but still a good idea to make sure that you keep these in order. Once you have those screws removed, you can take your tweezers again, if necessary, and just lift off this panel. You can probably get it with your fingers also. And then we're going to disconnect the display cables. There are three. We'll start with this one, one, two, and there's the third back here, oh, and then it went ahead and fell over. There's the third back here behind those two, and you sometimes it'll come unplugged by itself. We wanna make sure that's disconnected. And since we're going to be removing the logic board, we need all connected cables to be pulled. So we've got a flex cable here, a pop connector rather, here also for the charging port, and then we've got the antenna wire. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect those. And when you disconnect this charging port flex cable, you'll notice there's some adhesive under here. So just carefully peel this down away from the logic board to about this point. 
And then we want to make sure we get in here and disconnect that antenna wire. So I'm going to use a pair of static uh, safe tweezers and just kind of come in here from the corner. We want to get underneath that gold colored material and not pry on the wire itself. Sometimes, let's see if we can come in this way. Get right under there and just pop that off. And they, for some reason, decided to add this rubber cement type of glue or adhesive or whatever it is to keep these things plugged in. Very strange about this phone. You can see I'm kind of having to work with it because it's really stuck on there with this goo, whatever that is. I'm not sure why they did that just on the 5C. I don't think I've seen it on any other iPhone. So we'll kind of get this out of the way. And now we have a number of screws that need to be removed. If you have your new logic board, it's easy to use this as a reference to see what needs to come out. So if you get lost, you can always check that. I'm going to save this screw right here for the last. I like to do that to stabilize the logic board while I'm working with it. Also, you will need to remove the SIM card tray because it runs through the frame into the logic board. And until you remove this, you won't be able to pull the board out. So now I'm going to remove several screws. Uh, many of them are going to be the special screw that is made for iPhone that will require, uh, not require, but I prefer to use this specialized driver. This is designed to remove this type of screw, which is a little different. It's almost like a hybrid between a Phillips and a standard. And what I like about this driver is it has a nice point that goes down inside and seats properly. You can also remove that with a small flathead, but it's definitely much easier with this one. We've got one just like it down here. And another one just next to the battery terminal. All these need to come out. And then we'll have some Phillips screws that we need to remove. So we've still got one, two, three. And if I remember correctly, we've got the two up here that cover the camera. Let's go ahead and start with those. So as you can see, it is important to make sure that you keep everything organized because there are lots of screws involved in this process. Remove this one. Be very careful, there is an antenna wire attached to the back side of the logic board. So as you start to open this up, and you pull that down because it's tucked in underneath here, you can very carefully get the camera out of the housing and then flip this over and you'll see that this cable needs to be disconnected. Which can sometimes be tricky because again they use this weird goop. I can't even get a hold of this thing with a fingernail. So be very careful. You can see there's some sticky stuff there. I don't know why they did that. It's only on this phone. All right so we have our logic board out and now we're going to replace it with this one. The process will be the reverse, but I'm going to go ahead and install it so you can see that from beginning to end. Now we can go ahead and put this back in. So remember the first thing we need to do is get this antenna wire connected. This may not be fun because for one, it's a very small 
connection. And number two, this glue crap that they put on it is just not going to help. So I've got to get down here where I can see to line this up. And yeah, that's going to be tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of this material off of the board so that I'll have some room. Again, just a very strange thing, Apple. I'm assuming they had a problem with this cable staying connected, so they decided to use, I don't know what, hot glue? Weird. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and come at this sideways so we can see. And it's probably the most difficult part of this procedure. Remember, don't force it. as they are very easy to damage. All right, so that was fun. You got that plugged in. Make sure you don't put any stress on it because you'll unplug it again. And as we maneuver this back into position, you want to make sure you get around this cable at the top. Tuck this little piece underneath that spot where the uh, screw goes through and then of course make sure that your three cable or your two flex cables and your antenna wire are clear down here at the bottom get that into position make sure that your camera seats in the housing properly and then I'm going to put this screw back in because as I mentioned earlier once you do that you can kind of relax because you'll have something to hold the board down and if you don't it has a tendency to pop back up well not this one some have a tendency to pop back up and you get other cables buried. But once we get something in here to hold it in place, we're pretty safe. In fact, I could reconnect these cables at this point, but I'm going to go ahead and put the screws back in. Make sure that you can see where they go. Again, we have one down here at the bottom. In fact, before we do that, let's go ahead and plug this cable in. Uh, I'm going to put this screw over here because that cable is just never fun sometimes you get lucky but not usually getting this thing lined up i like to peel off some of this garbage i'm sure it's there for a reason but right now it's not helping me and i don't think these cables would come undone too easily but i assume and we have more of this garbage inside so if these don't match up in other words, if they don't peel off the same way from both phones, then they're going to be in the way. So I'm going to work at this for a minute, very carefully. Something that hopefully will not cause any damage. And hope that you guys can hear me because I'm pretty far away from the microphone at the moment. There are lots of little components down here that can get damaged easily. So you want to be really careful poking around. I'm only lifting. I'm not really poking at this. Once I get it started, I'm going to reach down in there and grab it this way. Peel that away. See, this is going to make my life difficult. So let's set this into place and then very carefully press it down. And there you see, I got lucky for once and it lined up. So we're plugged in there and now we can go ahead and get the screws back in. So we've got our charging port cable. You can connect the main flex cable if you want to. Just make sure you wait on the battery until we get the display installed. And now we'll proceed with getting all this stuff back inside. And do make sure that the antenna sits in this groove over here next to the speaker. You don't want to get any trapped and damaged. One more of these up at the top. Regular screw right above it. And when I say above, I mean to my left, referring to the position of the phone, which I do this way because I feel like you can see better than if I was to do this and zoom all the way out, everything gets smaller. So. Just in case anyone's wondering, we have our re retaining clip for the 
main camera. Let's set this into place. And I'm going to hope that this camera works. I believe it does, but if not, uh, it does unplug on the back side of the board here, so it's relatively easy to swap it out if we need to for any reason. All right, so we're almost there. Just need to plug in the display and get the retaining panel and then we'll reconnect the battery. Make sure you push this all at once. Try not to push in the very center of the cable because if you do, sometimes they bend. You create a high spot or a low spot and you won't get a full connection. And then your touchscreen or LCD will not function. This is always my favorite cable, by the way. Well, I got it. This time I'm going to save that awkward screw for last. This one I usually have to place with a pair of tweezers. Although oddly, sometimes they do end up becoming magnetized. I'm not sure why, but obviously there's some amount of iron in this alloy, whatever it is made of. I swear I am far more uh, dexterous, is that a word? My dexterity is much better than it looks in this video because I'm working around a camera so not perfect, but I'm not this bad, I promise you. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make sure that the battery cable is seated between the battery and the housing. You don't want it twisting around in there at all. Let me hit the camera as I speak about it. Plug that in. Get our retaining panel and we are almost finished. All right, make sure that the tabs at the top of the screen tuck inside of the frame. So this should be nice and flush like this when you put it together. Should be all the way in and then carefully work your way down the sides. If you encounter resistance, don't be surprised. The 5C is sometimes tricky, especially up at this corner. So whatever you do, make sure that you don't force it. Sometimes you just have to fool around with it and reposition it a few times until it finally goes in. When it does, everything should be somewhat flush all the way around. Definitely shouldn't be sticking up anywhere. We can install the SIM card reader, put our two screws in the bottom, and then when we hit the power button, we should be good to go. If you found the video helpful, like it, share it, check out my channel for more tutorials and product reviews, and most of all, remember to hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave your feedback in the comments section, and thanks for watching.